Guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting day because today is the day that we're making rope with our homemade rope making machine that we made out of very simple materials that I got from the hardware store. Hopefully it's simple enough that you can make one at home as well. And today I'm gonna to show you what it can do. I've gathered up a bunch of different materials today ranging from cotton yarn to sisal to gazelle twine. I didn't even know that was a thing. We're gonna put these things through our rope making machine today and see what quality and variations of rope that we can make today. And the coolest thing about this setup is theoretically, I should be able to operate it by myself. Let's see if that's really the case. So to start off our experiment today, I thought it'd be fun to start with some of this polypropylene twisted mason line. Now the line itself says it's not made for any load bearing applications because one strand by itself really isn't that strong. But the process of winding weak individual strands into one rope makes these fibers exponentially stronger. Let me show you what I mean. Now the whole idea of building the system the way I did is to automate the process so one person by themselves can make rope at home. Now in doing a few experiments and preparing for this video today, I came across a few snags that affected the quality of my rope. So I've made a few adjustments to this system that'll hopefully address those challenges. The first thing I did was take a little bit of sandpaper and sand out the individual holes in the rope making top to make them a bit smoother. That way the lines won't snag up when they start twisting. I also went down to the hardware store and found a little round knob that I put on the back and the idea here is that's going to reduce the friction so that the top can slide a little bit easier when it's ready to. The swivel hooks that I picked up have a tendency to bind and they don't swivel as much as I wanted them to so I just gave a few shots of WD-40 that'll hopefully add a little bit of lubrication and get them spinning a bit quicker and I increased the weight of our counterweight by using a larger water bottle. So now we're ready to make some rope and here's how we get started. Since I've already got these clamps here, what I'm gonna do is just tie a quick slip knot and loop it over one of the tops of the clamps there just to hold it in place and then run the string all the way down to one of the bottom hooks. I'm gonna start with the bottom left hook. And it's important that this string goes in between these two guidelines and hooks on from the inside. You'll see why in a second. Now this line can run back, loop back around our post and we're gonna do the same thing with the hook on the right side. We're gonna make sure the line goes inside the two guide wires up around the hook and pull it tight. One more loop around the back post and this time we're going to go over the top of this unit and we're going to loop into the top hook and run it back. So as easy as that all of our line has been run so now we can disconnect it from the post, travel up the line a little bit and we can just form a simple slip knot that will give us a little loop that will connect right into our swivel hook. Pull that tight and snip off the excess. It's all slippery now from the WD-40. Now if you look at the way I designed this rope making top here, there's little slits that connect to each of these holes and that's so these strings can fit up inside and be held in place. Once they're in there, they're not gonna come out and that's very important. Now here's where it gets fun guys. All we have to do is take our slider and push it to the back, connect our drill to one of the spinner bolts, pull the trigger and watch what happens. Okay, so looking at the quality of this rope, guys, it's still not what I want it to be. And I think that's because this little ball that I put on the back didn't actually get pushed. It kind of like bypassed the ball and created a, a little knot here. So I'm gonna take that ball off. I'm gonna cut it in half, drill and tap a hole so we get kind of a half moon crescent shape stuck on the back. Hopefully that'll help guide it a little bit better than this one did. Oh, don't tell me that's glass. Oh, geez. Dang it, I thought that was plastic. <laughs> So update guys, apparently our little knob was made of glass. I cannot cut it in half. So I'm gonna have to make one out of wood instead. It's only a fail if you give up and stop trying. So I think that turned out pretty good. We're just hacking it together. Who knows? It's the wood bumper. That has to work. I can't see how it wouldn't. All right, we're trying this again, guys, but this time we're using our modified wood bumper at the back to see if that makes a difference. And stop. There we go. Look at that. Now watch what happens if I release a little bit of tension on the line here. Watch what happens to the string. All that tension that was 
trapped in there comes right out. And now look at our rope. Oh my goodness, that is professional. Look at that, guys. So I think our little bumper on the back there made a huge difference. It pushed it along. Look at this right here. Does that not look like a professional piece of cordage? That is absolutely gorgeous. There's a nice piece of three-strand rope we just made out of twisted mason line. And I bet you this stuff is really, really strong. It'll be really fun to make knots with. Oh, the sweet smell of success. Update guys, we have just had some success. This worked with the pull of a trigger and about 60 seconds of runtime, we've just made ourselves about a four foot length of rope. Now, this still needs to be tied off and cut, but there's a very easy way to do that. And all you're gonna need is a little bit of electrical tape and a pair of scissors. Watch this. Now take a small piece of electrical tape and just wrap it around a few times at the very end of the rope where you wanna cut it off. Then go to the back end of the rope and do the same thing. Now if your rope has a few imperfections along the first few inches, that's pretty normal, that's no big deal. Just come up to where it starts looking good and wrap your tape there instead. This will be the beginning of your finished rope. Cut the rope at the back just where the electrical tape ends and be prepared because that's gonna release the tension and drop your counterweight. Now simply snip off the other end and your finished rope is complete. These little bits here, easy to get rid of. Just pull your slider back and they come right off the hooks. No problem. So let's check out what we've got. Nice piece of orange cordage. I mean, that looks really cool, guys. That is completely legit. And this is one that you can practice tying your knots with. I mean, for example, very quickly, we can make ourselves a little square knot. The cool thing about this knot is it's like two loops pulled together. That looks pretty cool. So great news, guys. Apparently now we can make rope very quickly and very easily. So let's change things up a little bit and have some fun with colors. Now one thing going through my mind is if you put a different color of rope on each one of the strands and then wound them together, what would the rope end up looking like? Let's try throwing these three colors on and seeing how they turn out. I like this system. So we just turned three different colors of twine into one three-stranded rope. And if you look carefully here, you can actually see all the different colors. You can see the pattern and uh, you can actually follow the line. If you twist it, you can see how the color twists up and melds in with the other ones. That's really cool. And I think it's a good example of how the ropes twist and bind together. Now the rope is pretty thin, but it's a lot stronger than the twine itself. And theoretically, you can make three of these strands quite a bit longer and wind them together to make an even thicker rope. That'd be kind of fun to do. So we've got an orange rope, we've got a multicolored rope. The next question on my mind is what if we took some cotton yarn and put four strands on each hook? How will that turn out? How's that gonna look? Let's go find out. Sweet! That rope looks great. That is 100% cotton, guys. And that looks profesh. Professional. It's wound very, very tight. I like it. So just for comparison, here's one I did with two strands per hook, and this is the one we did four strands per hook. Not surprisingly, it essentially doubles the size. So guys, we've made rope out of cotton, out of twine, out of twisted mason line. For this last experiment, I want to go back to my scouting roots and try sisal. Now if you look at the package here, it says this only has a working load of five pounds, which really isn't that much. But you can bind these things together and turn them into rope and their strength goes up exponentially. The problem with this stuff is it's got a lot of fibers that stick out. So usually you need a couple of people to help pull the lines apart as you're making the rope. So I went down to a local laundromat and picked up some wire hangers to see if we could make a makeshift spacer to do it all for us. Kind of looks like a car. <laughs> Cool. Wow, it worked. We did it guys. We single-handedly made a nice length of sisal rope. And this is really nostalgic stuff for me because it takes me back to my Boy Scout days. 
the smell, the feel. I mean, this is the stuff that we used to make. And to get all these fibers off of the sides, we would usually drag this through the flames of a fire. But in lieu of a fire today, I'm gonna to use my propane torch instead. Mmm, that smell brings back memories. Ropes like this still have quite a bit of tension wound into them, so they need to be stretched, they need to be beaten, they need to be worked over time, and they will soften and loosen up and be a little bit more workable. You can make ropes a lot longer than this as well. Just for fun, I tried making about a 20 foot length of rope because that's as far as I could stretch it across my living room. But you could scale this idea and go even longer, as long as you had enough spacers in between so the fibers didn't catch into each other. We now have the power to make rope at home, and this could virtually be applied to any fibrous material. You could use coconut husk, you could use hemp, you could use string, you could even use human hair. That would be an interesting project, wouldn't it? So I hope you guys try this. Making rope is a lot of fun, simple materials, a great weekend project. So go give it a try. Thanks for joining me for this project today. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. With rope like this, I feel like we should go build a pirate ship. <laughs> a nice big wooden ship. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and remember I'm giving away prizes now on every new video. All you have to do to qualify is subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and select to be notified when my next videos get released. The secret link to my giveaways will be pinned in the comments for the first 12 hours. If you like what I'm doing, show your support right now by giving this video a big thumbs up and share with a friend. I love you back, and I'll see you next time.